Hello friends, so I'm back in uh, downtown El Paso again and today I have a roll of Fuji Provia 100F and uh, Agfa Precisa. That's a 100 slide film. So what I'm trying to do is, is find out what happened with this uh, ectochrome because it overexposed by a stop, three quarters to one stop. So I'm coming back down. I got the same F3. I'm going to have my shutter on the same settings, right? It's going to be 1 over 125 and it's going to be f16 in the sun f5.6 in the shadows of these tall buildings so my point is when i get home and i develop these i'm going to see if these developed if i'm excuse me if these exposed properly then i know it's the ectochrome film the ectochrome ectochrome is actually really a truly an asa 200 film but if if these are overexposed then i know my shutter is out of calibration in my f3 it's actually firing at about 1 over 80 or 1 over 60. so that's the whole purpose of me coming downtown is number one i love downtown el paso it's very beautiful and secondly i just you know obviously i love photography and i haven't shot film <clears throat> in a few months so i want to come down here and take care of this oh and this is also for my wife right yes honey i'm wearing my wedding ring right <laughs> <laughs> gotta put that in there <laughs> happy wife happy life happy life so anyways uh, i'm gonna go ahead and start shooting it's kind of a nice day it's cold you know and which is good right because you don't want all that that heat that uh, those waves rising up from the concrete to destroy the the shot so the colder the better right you get really pristine shots in the cold so right now it's about 40 degrees fahrenheit and i should get some really good shots at 40 degrees fahrenheit okay and i'm gonna go home take these photos Go home and develop the film and I'll post the results. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to begin first roll. I'm going to shoot Provia. Here we go with Provia. Okay, so I just want to let you know uh, when I uh, scanned these into my computer and, and edited these in post-production and Lightroom and Photoshop, they came out beautifully. But for some reason, I'm using uh, Video Shop. It's a mobile app here on my smartphone. And uh, um, I'm getting really bad artifacts in the sky. So th for the most part, the, when there's no sky in the image, the images look good. But you'll see some images as they as they roll in here. There's like bands. There's some horizontal bands in the sky, and they look horrible. But I, I, I assure you, I'll give you my word, when I edited these, they're not in the photos. They're not part of the actual slide, nor in the in the scanning nor in the editing. These artifacts are being introduced by Video Shop as I made the video on my smartphone. So I'm asking you please, please don't unnecessarily punish me with uh, with negative comments or thumbs down because I assure you this, this, these are not in the actual slide. These are artifacts created by Video Shop. Okay, thank you.
Okay, so you saw the slides there. I returned home and did the did the processing here at my kitchen sink, both the Provia and the Precisa, and they, they came out beautifully. The exposures were spot on. So uh, my point is, in making this video, the reason I, I wanted to go out so quickly with different with different slide films was to compare, right, to see if Ektachrome was indeed hot by one stop. Basically, it was really an ASA 200 film, or if my shutter on my F3 was out of calibration. And I've confirmed that with the precising, with the probium, my shutter was spot on. My exposures were good. So it, it, re, it, it proves my point that Ektachrome is truly like an ASA 200 speed film. And I thank one of the, the commenters from the Ektachrome, I think it was, he was phone, phone jacker from the United Kingdom. I believe he's from the UK. But anyways, he said he's been doing a lot of reading and research on Ektachrome, and, and he's found that with similar similar uh, findings from different people who've shot it, that they've all basically said it's, it's running hot. So the only thing I can kind of hope is that Kodak, when they right when they go to their next production maybe if they can tweak go back to the lab make some tweaks and maybe get this back to you know either either change the name of the film to to e200 right literally e200 is that e100 or just you know do some tweaking in the, uh, before the next roll goes out go back to the prototype press the little five inch wide roll right and then do some chemistry changes then once they've determined they got it back to 100 speed then they can go back to the four foot wide, 6,000 foot with the new chemistry change. I don't know, I don't work there, I'm not involved in that, but it seems they have one of two choices to make, either change the chemistry or actually literally rename, relabel the film E200 to indicate 200 speed. Okay, so uh, that's it. Hope you enjoyed it. God bless you and take care.